statement stating clearly our objection to the appointment of Public Relations Officer Mr. Richard Francois. It is the party's view, based on the evidence provided to the Chairman of GCOM, that Mr. Francois is openly supportive of the opposition, which can only serve to compromise the integrity of GCOM and information released to the Guyanese people. The PVP is also aware that GCOM is in the process of recruiting and training Elections Day staff. Again, we call for a transparent and fair process. The party understands that the 2011 manuals are being used to conduct these training sessions. It seems that GCOM has not learned from its 20, 2012 retreat. This retreat was more of a review of the elections of 2011, which was replete with administrative bunglings and open political bias by some GCOM appointed polling day staff. Thank you. Thanks. Yes, now we are questioning. We we'll start it. I've been here for five years. I'm a story on GCOM. Mm. Uh, you spoke about the uh, PR person, Mr. Richard Francois. Yeah. Uh, did you know of the article in the Constitution that stipulates? Did I know what? Of the article in the Constitution which stipulates that political parties should not seek to get involved in the management of GCOM. And um, followed uh, part B of that is the chairman of GCOM, Dr. Serge Valley, recently said that he cares not about Francois' background only because he can only carry out the objectives of GCOM and cannot be allowed to issue any statement on his own behalf and with his beliefs. Does this comfort the party? It doesn't. Um, I don't know. I haven't acquainted myself with the constitutional arraignment with respect to employment practices at GCOM. But what I do know is GCOM is not a holy cow in the administration and the government's arrangements in this country. GCOM was set up in order to ensure that free and fair elections are held in this country to the satisfaction of the political parties, including the People's Progressive Party. And if we are not satisfied with the employment practices of GCOM and any individual that GCOM has employed, we will make our views known publicly as well as we will write to, G to the GCOM, the chairman, expressing our disquiet with respect to the employment of such persons. So if Mr. Surge Bali, as I saw in one of the newspapers, uh, wants to beat his breast about the constitutional protectionism in respect to GCOM, he's free to do so. But he can be assured that the PPP is not going to stand by and allow anything to pass that we have evidence on in respect to whether it's the employment practices of GCOM or anything that we consider to be an infraction of the representation of the People's Act. Mr. Roy, you said that you, you aren't comforted by the fact that he noted that Mr. Francois cannot issue any statement without um, GCOM's, without being in satisfaction with GCOM's objectives. That who can't issue any statement? Francois. Your party is concerned. I thought he said he. He, Sir Bali. No, 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 no. He's saying that Mr. Francois cannot issue any statement unless it's in it's, it confirms to the objectives of GCOM. So basically, he is just carrying out, he's just a mediator between the press and GCOM, and he, he will just carry he, out. You keep using the word he, 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 who, he, he, ha, he, ha, who. The PRO is oh. just a mediator. So the PRO can only give out. Francois a mediator? Since when public is he a mediator? He's always a mediator between the public and, and the organization. I'm not That's aware. I'm been. not aware of that. So let's be real. I, I, do, I don't see that. I, I don't recall seeing that. Or if, if that is indeed so, mm -hmm. then maybe they should publish the TORs of Mr. Francois. The what? The TORs. Okay. That's right. Or his job description. If they want to be transparent, let them publish the terms of reference or the job description, what is called the JD of Mr. Francois, as well as his contractual arrangements with GCOM. Let us carry the thing right down to the wire. Okay. And follow up. Uh, Dr. Suraj Valley also stated that he knows Doc, uh, former President Mr. Artichong is there. He went to the way, he danced to the way. Who said that? 
Uh -huh. he gave a speech Dance at the wake? Well, probably. I don't know. That's what the man said. He gave a speech at his oh, funeral. Okay. He knows that the man is dead. However, what is preventing GCOM from taking uh, former President Mr. Chung off the list is the procedure. Have you... In what procedure is he referring to? The entire procedure, I mean, the GRO... No, 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 no. You quoted Mr. Serge Bali. I think uh, the procedure... Excuse me. Excuse me. You quoted Mr. Serge Bali almost, uh, what do we call it, uh, in precise terms, in precise terms in relation to the France war matter. Mm -hmm. Now, I'd like you to do the same thing in respect to this particular matter, okay? So I can be extremely careful as to what I'm responding to, if you don't mind. No, I don't mind. Uh, okay, let's go it over again. Um, Dr. Serge Valley is saying that he's very much aware. I have to congratulate you on your courageousness because the other journalists here don't seem to have the courage to, or the pluck, so to speak, to speak and ask questions to the minister. Can I continue? Yes, you may. Thank you. Dr. Serge Valley is saying mm -hmm. that he's very much aware of the fact that Ms. Chung is dead. However, Where did he say that? At a recently concluded workshop between, uh, on elections with the media. And that was published? Yes. Yeah. That statement that you said was published about Arthur Chung? I can't attest that it was published, that particular statement. Oh, okay. Continue? Mm -hmm. Good. And he's saying, the, what is preventing GCOM from taking Mr. Chung off the list mm -hmm. is the fact that the process requires uh, from GRO to go to GCOM, etc. In light of such, have you had a meeting? I mean, the PVP is so interested, and you're also the Minister of Home Affairs. Since this revelation about the amount of death people on the list, had you any meeting with the management of GRO to see how they can help the process from that aspect of it? And if you haven't, do you plan on doing that soon? Well, first of all, you're assuming that a meeting is required. Because but obviously if they're lapsing. The is well, lapsing. lapses don't necessarily imply that a meeting is required to correct lapses. But something has to be done. Well, I'm coming to that. Okay. You are asking me whether I have had a meeting with the management of the GRO. I am saying to you, you are assuming that a meeting is required to deal with whatever the inadequacies they are. Now, as far as I'm concerned, as the Minister of Home Affairs, we have a very efficient management at the GRO. And without my even requesting information on the matter from the head of the GRO, the GRO was quite efficient in sending to me the records showing the transmission of the information with respect to Mr. Arthur Chung to GCOM. The records are there to show the date and when the information was transmitted to GCOM by the GRO, as well as other records showing the transmission of the requisite data on debts to the GRO so that they could take the appropriate action. So a meeting wasn't required. So you're saying in this instance, the GRO is not the fault? I am saying that they transmitted the information did they transmit in the information before this preliminary? Long process? before. Pardon? Long before. Okay, thank you. Long before. Next. Thank you, Marcus Capital News. Uh, Mr. Rohi, Dr. Serge Pali has said if the government calls the elections, it will get the system ready, it will be able to put on Which the one of them? Sorry? Which one of the elections? Local government or general elections. He has said all the government needs to do is call the date and they will get the elections done. So what declaration are, is the PPP looking for? I think that's a rather loose statement if it, that is what is attributed to Mr. Serge Bali, that all the government has to do call a date and they will get the work done. I don't think we can accept that on the face value. My statement there on behalf of the party calls on certain specific steps which we would like Mr. Serge Bali to comment on. And we expect that he would comment on it as a professional chairman and not to get into the political tantrums that he's so uh, adept at getting into. 
So I would say that uh, let us deal, first of all, with the questions that we have posed to Mr. Sujibali vis-a-vis the statement that we've issued, and rather than my commenting on what is attributed to him, which is that all the government has to do is to call a date and they will get things fixed. I want some movie called The Fixer, but I'm not so sure whether he can fit that bill in respect to elections. Mr. Rohi, uh, the PPP has three commissioners on the, the commission. Three? So Did you say two? I said three. Oh, sorry. So couldn't these risk issues be raised, or couldn't you get clarification from these the matters? Commissioners? Yes, of course. These matters are being raised by our commissioners, um, and it is based on those concerns that we tend to reflect them at our press conferences. Next, any other question? Mm. Well, let me deal with the statement first. Let's deal with the statement. Well, I was told that, you know, mm -hmm. I'm assuming things when I mentioned that uh, the Kaichu News reporter is bold and courageous, but it, it seems as though what I said is no longer an assumption. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, Let's. Have a moderator all right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> any other question based on the statement? I hope this doesn't create problems for the Kaiju News reporter. Uh -huh. I hope she will get solidarity from her fellow colleagues if any uh -huh. untoward development takes place as a result of my statement, but yeah, you have it wasn't meant in any way to create any harm for her. It's just a compliment. And sometimes compliment can put people in trouble too. Have a Oh, thank you. Now we have another one. <laughs> Um, this, didn't me, this, didn't, this, this was no way intended, Mr. Um, Mr. Marks, to discredit your ability to step up to the plate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Minister Roy, we might soon be swinging into election mode. Uh, Which one of the elections? <laughs> Local government elections, general elections, given that we've got two, um, we've got two pending here. We've got a no contest. No, you see, listen. It's important for me to ask that question yeah, because I, you see. I, 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 don't, I don't mind clarifying. I don't mind clarifying. Oh, but you don't um, mind me asking to clarify either? No, no, no. Oh, I, I don't mind. Okay, okay. Uh, what is your take on parties releasing um, financing information, campaign financing information? But my take? Yeah. Well, first of all, you have to ask me if I have a take on that. Do you, do you have a take on that? That is a matter that I believe has been discussed time and again. Uh, I think it was sometime around the 2006 elections, they had an inter-party committee that was set up to discuss this question of campaign financing. And all the parties came to the table and they were talking about it uh, extensively. I don't think they got very far because obviously, uh, you know, having labored in the vineyards, you know, no wine or otherwise was produced. So uh, this is a matter which all the political parties have to agree to. You know, all the political parties have to agree to, and in the interest of transparency and accountability, it would seem to me that what that question would be best suited with due respect to those who shout from the rooftops on transparency and accountability. One can be found just behind Parliament in Hatfield Street, and the other one could be found, I don't even know where their headquarters are now because they're like a mobile headquarters. Every three months they keep shifting the headquarters from one place to the next. I don't know if they have financial problems to be able to rent a, a building for the headquarters. Sometimes it's in a garage, sometimes it's in a lawyer's office. You know, it's all over the place. Okay. Thank heavens we have Freedom House for the one up street has been here for years. But is one party that, that talks a lot about transparency and things like well, that? Well, implicit in yeah. this statement that you just said, you probably would know where we stand. Next. Any other question? If not, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Media, welcome to the BBP Weekly Press Conference. With me as our General Secretary, you'll be reading two statements, after which you'll be taking questions. Yes? Good morning, everyone. The first statement reads as follows. The People's Progressive Party is monitoring closely the deadly Ebola virus disease, EVD, which is wrecking havoc in West Africa, particularly Sierra Leone, Guinea, and Liberia. 
where it has already infected over 9,200 persons and claiming the lives of more than 4,500. There is clearly a humanitarian crisis looming in the affected countries, which could easily spread to other countries and regions, bearing in mind we are living in a global community where inter-country and intercontinental travel is now a norm. We wish, therefore, to put on record our profound concern with the, way forward, with the way the world is responding to this outbreak and express solidarity with the governments and peoples of the affected countries. We are of the firm view that the current outbreak of the Ebola virus disease could have been easily brought under control had the international community responded appropriately when the virus was discovered in 1976 in the Sudan. The world's failure to respond appropriately and immediately then has resulted in a catastrophe. It is only now that the, in in the international community is moving to respond to the virus and even this response is slow and inadequate. We in the PPP, like many others around the world, see this outbreak as a national security threat that could lead to a breakdown in law and order and have significant negative impact on trade and investment, especially for the poor and developing states. We therefore join in the call for the developed world to urgently and decisively provide the necessary assistance not only to the affected countries, but to medical experts who seek to develop a treatment for this virus. We also wish to caution that while individually we seek to protect ourselves from the virus infiltrating our populations, there must be a well-coordinated global response. This is the only way in which we can realistically bring this under control. We are heartened at the position of the government of Guyana in making a financial contribution to the global appeal for aid to combat the Ebola, the Ebola virus disease. Relatively, relative to our, our own response and preparations in the face of this global threat, the PBP also endorses fully the decision taken by government to cease the issuance of visas the nationals of the affected countries and increase screening of any person who may have traveled to the affected areas. We also support the initiative taken by the Ministry of Health to increase surveillance at entry, at ports of entry and the establishment of quarantine facilities at our main ports of entry, namely the Chedi Jagan International Airport at Tamiri, the Georgetown Hospital Hospital and Ogle. The PVP endorses President Ramatar's position that the situation calls for the full cooperation of all Guyanese and as such, we urge our fellow citizens to educate themselves on the Ebola virus disease and the necessary measures that can be taken to prevent an infection or a possible outbreak. Finally, we in the PVP will in the coming weeks and months work closely with the Ministry of Health and government in preparing our response to any eventuality and urge all political parties and civil society organizations to join the government's efforts in this regard. The Ebola virus disease, like any other disease, knows no boundaries. So as a people, let us work together to keep Guyana Ebola free. The next statement reads as follows. The People's Progressive Party calls on the Guyana Elections Commission to update the nation on their state of readiness for local government elections. The recently revised, revised list of electors indicates more the preparations for general elections. It is necessary that GCOM let the Guyanese people know what systems and preparations are in place should these elections be called. One must also be cognizant of the fact that any such elections will be held under the new electoral system. The PVP has noted the many public statements and editorials calling for local government elections, but the critical questions remain 
in Qigong ready. Our Guyanese comfortable with the preparation and information being released by GCOM on this very sensitive matter. GCOM has made claims that enough groundwork and consultations were done to ascertain boundaries countrywide, publicly declaring 585 constituencies. It is therefore expected that we must have 585 accurate list of electors in order to hold elections. How far has GCOM gone with this process? The PVP is very apprehensive that this has not been done thoroughly as to ensure that every eligible voter will be in his or her, his or her constituency list. Therefore, it is our contention that GCOM should do physical verifications within the communities to place persons on their respective lists thus allowing for a fair and transparent process whenever local government elections are called. It is our view that since the claims and objections period has concluded, GCOM will be, a bet will be in a better position to work assiduously towards having the correct demarcation of boundaries and proper constituency lists for the possibility of local government elections. The party calls on GCOM to make a public declaration on this very sensitive matter and to fulfill its constitutional mandate of ensuring that every eligible Guyanese is placed on the OLE so that no one is disenfranchised. Further, the PVP has made several public statements expressing its concerns over GCOM's employment procedures and has written to the Chief